This week, we can't start any outdoor projects on account of the weather, so it's the perfect opportunity to work on Alex's van, named Dora the Explorer. Just two years ago, Dora was a bare cargo van, and with some help from our friends, we turned it into a camper van for Alex to live in full time. Having never done a conversion like this before, we kind of guessed what features he would need on the road. Today, two years after the initial build, we're making some improvements in a few key areas. For example, we're upgrading the headlights for better visibility. Having driven this van at night, I can tell you it's absolutely harrowing. So this is a bit of a safety feature. This is the old one, which is a halogen, and halogens don't care what side is positive and negative, so you can plug it in any way you want. With an LED, there is a positive and negative, so we have to plug the housing back in, test it with a multimeter, and then we'll know which way to plug this in. Single wire is positive, and the one with two coming off is ground. So this is the correct orientation. With newer LED bulbs, he'll have the visibility you would kind of expect on a modern vehicle. On the inside of the van, we're doing upgrades to the lighting as well. We originally installed cheap LED strip lights from Amazon, which have already failed once and probably will again. The new ones are more like what you'd find in the lobby of a hotel. As soon as I disconnect them and you see them go dim, you can start removing them and try to get rid of the old adhesive and everything. So on this strip, there are these little picture of a scissor. Kind of a perfect spot to cut it. So we can snip it right there. That's it, let's turn it on. Look how bright this it is. This is way brighter. This is what I've wanted all along. We're also revisiting the camera battery recharging station. It's in here. Ooh. You gotta make sure, ooh. What? What was that? I should have told you. You got to open the one below it first. Because oh, it, cause you know, you it like pinches that. the cord, yeah. Man, this took a beating, huh? I got power and I got no ground. So I think what we have is a bad ground. There's ground back here. We got that green light. But up here, we got no ground. So there's a broken connection somewhere in here. When it's easily kinked like this, it gets caught on things. When you have a big fat wire like this, it doesn't kink as easily. Let's install this and see if we have any sort of resistance when we're pulling the draw in and out. Because we're doing so many power related upgrades, including a project you'll see this week on Alex's channel, we also doubled the battery capacity for his house electrical system and added a voltage gauge so he knows when things are starting to get low. And by now, some of you might be wondering how I know how to do all this. Do you know about the Howcast videos? What's Howcast? When choosing a set of speakers for your car, the first thing you're gonna wanna check is the size of the speaker. Th these videos have been up for like a decade and people keep finding them of me explaining how to do car stereo stuff. These are great because they play all the frequencies that your stereo can output. Yeah, okay, I've seen those. You, yeah. <laughs> People message me those things all the time, dude. With component speakers, it's gonna sound like all the sound is coming from up high. At the time, and this was like a decade ago, I was working at a car stereo place. The owner of the place got an email from a company called Howcast, and they say we do how-to videos and we're looking for a car stereo expert. He's like, so what do you pay us or something? And they're like, no, you're gonna get a shout out and it's gonna get tons of traffic. And so it's like an advertisement for your business. So we thought, okay, let's do it. And at the time I worked in the office. I wasn't even an installer anymore, but I was the person who could like speak. And he's like, you know, Seth, will you be the one on camera to speak? I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. They post the videos. It's not the company name all over it, it's just me. Hi, my name's Seth Alvo and I've been working in the field of car audio and mobile electronics for over eight years. 
I was doing my own web development thing and I had all these clients and some of them big, they were doing background checks and they're just finding videos of me explaining car <laughs> stereo stuff from like two years before. Is this really the guy we want in charge of all this? He's a car stereo guy, he's not a web developer. Yes, at one point I was a car audio installation technician. It's the marriage of wiring and computers and tools and taking stuff apart. And so it, there's no wonder I was into it, but it's funny, here we are installing a stereo on video again. Before we even start messing with any of this, we wanna take your factory stereo out. You can't even verify that you have the right part until you have everything else out on the bench. For starters, you have these holes here, and those might be European radio release holes. We can use some straight picks to get it out. Okay. Like you've been doing this every day for the past month. The way that your radio is held in, you see this and this? So look what happens when you put the tool in. You push it in, then you feel that little click, oh yeah, I see that. and then you go like that to move the clip in and out. But if you didn't know that, you'd probably take all this apart trying to get to the radio, and you'd be super bummed out to know that it would take like five minutes with like a freaking coat hanger or something. This thing right here is worth more money than the radio we're putting in. So why are we swapping? Because it's a featureless piece of garbage. Factory ones are always worth more. If you ever went to sell your van, you would actually want to put this back in. You gonna hang on, the, on to that for me? Uh, yeah, I won't put it on eBay at all. Now this is a data plug right here. And that's what's gonna communicate with the car's computer. Okay. And that's the part where it's like, I hope it works. So this plug right here, this is gonna plug into the back of the aftermarket stereo, so you see right here, boop, plugs in there. So now we can just wire this up at the bench to here, and then we have a perfect adapter plug to plug into the back of your van. One way to do it is with these butt connectors. So you take one, you put it in there, you squeeze the metal, then you put the other side in, and you squeeze it and now the wires are joined together. With a buck connector like this, there are two failure points. It can fail here, it can fail there. The other thing is oftentimes, these two wires are not really touching. It's the metal in the buck connector that's carrying the current and signal. So you twist the wires together. Now the wires are absolutely touching each other. And now you just put this single cap over them and you crimp it. The advantage to this is A, it's faster, B, the wires are actually touching each other, and then the disadvantage is it's ugly. It's really ugly. It's way uglier than this. This, this looks better. We've got all this wired up, so the next thing to do is install it in the vehicle, and then verify what's working and what's not working. What's not working, we can chase down those little issues one by one. This goes in, and then it clips into place. There are gonna be things that don't work. That's why I'm not sticking the stereo all the way in the dash, is because we're, we're about to find out what works and what doesn't. Is that gonna fit? Yeah, it's gonna fit. There's a, there's a uh, beanie underneath it right now. Turn the key to the ignition position and wait until the radio comes on. If it doesn't come on within 60 seconds, turn the key to the off position, disconnect the interface, check all connections, reconnect the interface, and then try again. Okay. So it did not come on. We're only getting 12 volts on the constant power, not on the switched power. Now let's test these other two. Nothing. So I'm gonna see if I can call this company. You are caller number 11 in the queue. Please hold. The reason I'm calling, I turned on the ignition key. I'm getting no accessory power. Radio is not turning on. Right, you gotta set it up, add the vehicle in the app. It'll Bluetooth it to your phone, you'll see it, and then you connect to that, and then you just set it up that way. From the factory, this is programmed for a Jeep Renegade. You gotta reprogram it for a Ram Pro Master if you wanna use it for that. There it goes. Ah, and it figured it out. Dodge Ram Pro Master 2017, it's it read 18. it. It's definitely What are you 18. talking about? That like, the car is an 18? Yeah. 
No. Nah. Date of manufacture, September 2017. But they'll sell it as an 18. But you can only tell from that sticker on the door what the real year is. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just how it is. That's just how she goes. Let's uh, turn on the ignition. Oh! <laughs> there it goes. Yeah! Yeah, your AM ain't working. Let's try and swap these. Do we have AM now? Yeah. Let's try FM. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I had the wrong plug plugged in. So nice. swapped them. We have AM and FM. Sweet. Here's the moment of freaking truth. Oh, we've arrived. Backup cam? Backup cam. I don't know. How could the backup cam possibly work? I don't know. Are you going to put There's it in no reverse? There's no way. Yeah, I'm going to put it in reverse. No way! <laughs> Can we adjust the brightness on this one? Oh yeah! Watch what happens when I turn your headlights on. On. Oh, there it goes. Now watch what happens when I turn your headlights off. So it's hooked up to the illumination wire, so you have automatic dimming. That is, that's actually so nice. It's actually so nice because your freaking factory radio didn't even do that. 3,000 lumen light straight into your eyeballs as you're trying to drive down the highway with barely functional headlights. That sounded like something broke. Nah, that was just a body clip. This is why we don't allow customers into the install bay. This is the piece from your car. And if you look in the back, it's a mini USB. So all we need is a mini USB cable and we can run it from the dashboard back there instead of having some janky wire hanging out someplace and a dead USB port that doesn't do anything. Boom. So now because this is gonna be behind the dash, we just wanna tape these together. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is sick. Send text to Seth's bike hacks. What's the message? Dude, this thing is sick. Here's your text to Seth's bike hacks. Dude, this thing is sick. Send. Okay. Message sent. <laughs> this is awesome. Hands free. It was fun installing a car stereo again for the first time in a decade. Things are more computerized now, but the installation process is more or less the same. And since all vehicles still run on DC electrical systems, I can take my experience from years ago and apply it to camper vans for mountain bikers to live in. I know this was a little different from what we normally do, but it was a rainy weekend, and some of you have been asking about the infamous Howcast videos. So there you have it. Hopefully, things will dry up in time for a build next week. But until then, thanks for installing with me today, and I'll see you next time. I mean, you don't have simple things that the most basic cars from the mid-1980s have. Like, for instance, you can't dim... I refuse to believe that you can't dim your stereo.